morning, glory America, bonjour, hi Canada, greetings America, the world has found the Salvation Army kettle at hughhewitt.com, and thank you all, $174,409 raised in just under three weeks, headed to two fifty. dollars I'm going to make that goal, I know I am. Uh, my, that campaign is just one of the most inspiring things to me every year that we do. Thank you for being a part of it. Your help means Christmas for kids who would otherwise not have it. A shelter for families that are out in the cold. Addiction recovery services for people who are struggling with all sorts of addiction. A minute ago, Jamie Hughes gave us $163. Tim Evans, an hour ago, gave us $104. Joe Jadlow, five hours ago, before the show was on, $104. Thank you all. We want to help the least and the lost of the great men of the Salvation Army, folks like Captain Jerry Lester. It always pleases me to see people uh, reaching out to help the community because uh, we need to stand in the gap of other people who don't have and are less fortunate. Now, we, we are up to, you know, $174,409. That means I have $75,591. That's not bad for me. When it comes to math, seventy-five thousand nine. If, if one of you would like to write a check for seventy-five thousand, great. My guess is I need about a hundred people to write seventy-dollar checks, or a thousand people to write seventy-dollar checks, something like that. So please, we got twenty days left. Get going over to hughhewitt.com. Let me begin because it's drawing wild applause at the Washington Post. You know, whenever I write a column for the Washington Post, Dwayne, you know this. It's just people just can't. They can't stop applauding, and they write the comments. I want everyone to send my post column everywhere. The headline is, Barr's focus on abuses by the FBI is entirely warranted. That's a pun that someone else... I don't write the headlines. I wanted to write, Bravo, Bill Barr. But I want you to hear this, because Bill Barr is getting smashed up on some of the usual suspect cable places, and he deserves our applause. He, he ought to get the Medal of Freedom. I I write this morning, when Attorney General William Barr in the Washington Post, you can find it over at WashingtonPost.com, just scroll down, it's on the landing page. When Attorney General William Barr sat down Tuesday for interviews with NBC News' Pete Williams and the Wall Street Journal Gerard Baker, the Attorney General's argument was not with Justice Department Inspector General Michael Horowitz's report on the origins of the FBI investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. I'm going to be playing some of that Horowitz audio here shortly. Barr emphasized that he did not disagree with Horowitz's conclusions, though he deems them incomplete. The inspector generally noted face limits on the scope of his authorities and on the investigatory tools at his disposal. Barr instead turned his his attention to media coverage of Russiagate. His criticisms were withering and deserved. Quote, I think our nation was turned on its head for three years based on a completely bogus narrative that was largely fanned and hyped by a completely irresponsible press, Barr said. Oh, really? Yes. He doesn't seem to believe that even yet. The news media generally understands that, quote, there were gross abuses and, quote, inexplicable behavior that is intolerable in the FBI. The Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act warrant on Trump advisor Carter Page ought not to have been sought, Barr made clear. Once it had been granted, the warrant's renewal ought not to have been pursued, he said. But if the FBI and Justice Department were going to pursue a renewal, as they did, they had high obligations to alert the FISA court of the weaknesses in the application. Those obligations were not met, Barr said. That is his critical point about the Russiagate investigation itself. Even more important, though, is the education that the Attorney General gave everyone on the peril of a politicized intelligence and law enforcement community. Quote, from a civil liberty standpoint, the greatest danger to our free system is that an incumbent government uses the apparatus of the state both to spy on political opponents, but also to use them in a way that could affect the outcome of an election, NBC was told by Bill Barr. Barr asserted that 2016 marked the first time in U.S. history that, quote, counterintelligence techniques were used against a presidential campaign by the state itself. Most in the media, including me, have long been outraged by our Russia's election interference. Barr is too. But he seemed to be saying, and with cause, where's the outrage at the interference that came from within our own government? Not from abroad. There isn't a single factual argument to be made against Barr's assertions on Tuesday. 
Transcripts of both the Williams and the Gerard Baker interview should be studied in detail in con law courses as well as within the FBI, the DOJ, the intelligence community. A surveillance state unchecked by internal controls is deeply sinister. The Russiagate investigation is, at this point, an exception, a rare one, thankfully. And Barr is doing his best to guarantee it doesn't happen again. Lots of suspected wrongdoers and allies of suspected wrongdoers were on cable news proclaiming vindication after the Inspector General's report came out. Really, they were. Many had willing media accomplices. Trump derangement syndrome. But these declarations of innocence filled with false, indeed almost palpable bravado, certainly will not work on Barr, nor should they. Barr takes his job seriously, his number one job as he described it, is to protect the govern from those with law enforcement powers that can be abused. Now we must all wait for the report by federal prosecutor John Durham, who at Barr's direction is investigating the origins of the FBI's Russia probe. Durham deserves the same deference that former special counsel Robert Mueller received from the press, for Durham was not merely a special counsel named by a Republican acting attorney general as Mueller was. Durham was nominated and, and confirmed by the Senate and cleared as well, and strongly endorsed by the two Democratic senators from Durham's home state of Connecticut, Richard Blumenthal and Chris Murphy. They put out a joint statement about Durham's nomination as the U.S. Attorney for the District of Connecticut, a statement that should be pondered by every pundit scribbling away or a talking head hammering away at Barr and Barr's alleged rogue actions. Here's what those two Democratic senators wrote, quote, John Durham has earned immense respect as a no-nonsense, fierce, and fair prosecutor. We are pleased that the White House has agreed with our recommendation that he serve as United States Attorney for the District of Connecticut. As an assistant United States Attorney, John Durham has proven himself time and again in some of the most challenging and sensitive cases. The collective Beltway Manhattan media elite puts itself in the position of being disbelieved by a majority of the country because it was played knowingly or not, by the Trump dossier compiler Christopher Steele and his accomplices. These elites should not be played again by trashing an attorney general, at least the equal in integrity and intellect of any who have gone before him. End of my column. And there is the end of the argument. Now Horowitz, God bless Horowitz, well, God bless Lindsey Graham. Let's start with him. All right? Lindsey Graham, cut number four at the Senate Judiciary Committee yesterday. So... For a moment, let's assume that there was a lawful predicate to open up a counterintelligence investigation. What has been described as a few irregularities becomes a massive criminal conspiracy over time to defraud the FISA court, to illegally surveil an American citizen, and to keep an operation open against a sitting president of the United States, violating every norm known to the rule of law. Many of your prosecutors... Many of you have been U.S. attorneys. Many of you have been defense attorneys. Trump's time will come and go. But I hope we understand that what happened here can never happen again. Because what happened here is not a few irregularities. What happened here is the system failed. People at the highest level of our government took the law in their own hands. And when I say defraud the FISA court, I mean it. To your team, you are able to uncover and discover abuse of power I never believed would actually exist in 2019. How bad is it? Is as, it was, is, was as if J. Edgar Hoover came back to life. The old FBI, the FBI that had a chip on its shoulder, and wanted to intimidate people and find out what was going on in your life and the law be damned. Martin Luther King and just fill in the names. And they came back. That's what Lindsey Graham was saying, they came back. Thank you, Jamie Hughes, who donated 163, Eric Forum at 100, and my buddy, Captain Mark Vandroff, donated $36, which those of you who are Observant Jews understands a special number. Thank you, Mark. Thanks all of you for supporting the Salvation Army at HughHewitt.com.